Hey, I'm Chris Troy, host of St. Clair County Risa's Moment in History, and I'm here at the former home of the St. Clair Oakland Hotel. Opened in 1881, this hotel was the pride business of the Hopkins family of St. Clair. Built from a timber frame, this hotel would be one of, if not the most luxurious of its kind in its day. Facing the St. Clair River, this hotel featured 465 foot veranda, which ran along the hotel and bathhouse. The center of the hotel soared five stories, making it easy to be seen by steamers passing along the river. An ornate balcony covered the second floor of the hotel, providing a shady spot on sunny days to watch the ships go by. In the center of the ground floor of the hotel was the lobby, operating office, post office, reading room, and a spot for a telegraph with operator. North of the lobby was the dining room, which was decorated in pink and gold furnishings, which could sit 150 guests. Next to it was the ladies' ordinary, which was a smaller dining room used for private parties and breakfasts. In the hot summer evenings, there was dining on the porch, making sure that every meal was accompanied by the salutaris water drawn from the hotel's own mineral wells. South of the lobby was the public parlor, which ran the entire length of the hotel. Beyond that parlor was located the bathhouse and more guest rooms. The hotel also hosted a barber shop and billiards room. Altogether, there were 119 guest rooms, and unlike most hotels of its time, each room contained its own closet. Adding to the most modern convenience, the hotel also operated two hydraulic elevators and both gas and electric lights. Several cottages were built across the Oakland Avenue from the hotel. The cottages were fully furnished but did not include kitchens. Today, three of the cottages still survive the Gilded Age. One of the main attractions to the Oakland Hotel was the mineral spring baths. The Oakland provided 35 rooms for bathing, and it was said that bathing in mineral spring baths could bring relief of arthritis, shortness of breath, and help reinstate good general health. Making sure that any health questions could be answered, the hotel had a full-time doctor on staff whose office was located in the bath region of the hotel. Many hotel guests arrived on steamers such as the City of Erie and the Tajmu. Guests also arrived via rail lines. In later years, the DUR, or Detroit United Rail, housed an office at the hotel, making it convenient for guests to ride the line from Port Huron to Detroit. By the 1900s, the interest in spas and mineral baths declined, leading to the closing of the Oakland in 1911. In 1915, a severe fire damaged the building, leading to its tearing down in the 1920s. For Moment in History Extra, hey, I'm Chris Troy, reminding you all that history, that lives in all of us.